Thoughts on the Kingdom Apostolic Principles, Part 11 Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 to 4 In chapter 6 of Hebrews and verse 20, uh, the writer tells us that Jesus has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And he opens chapter 7 by reminding his readers of this Melchizedek. Well, he was a priest, but let me read the passage. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He was a king and priest, something uh, impossible in the Old Covenant. But this man predated the Old Covenant. He was above the Old Covenant. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him, and Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. Now this Melchizedek, first, his name means king of righteousness. King, yes, and a righteous king, and a king of righteousness. That ties in with the previous discourse, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Then also king of Salem means king of peace. Righteousness and peace, mercy, truth, they've all kissed each other in our Lord Jesus Christ. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, like the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. Verse 4, just think how great he was. Even the patriarch Abraham gave him a tenth of the plunder. This is concerning Melchizedek. But Melchizedek is a picture, an illustration, a type, a shadowing of someone far greater than even the Melchizedek. The Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is king priest. He has a kingdom, but he has died to save his people from their sins and translate them out of the realm of darkness into his own kingdom. He is the Christ, the Messiah, the promised one, and his kingdom which he is establishing and expanding and one day will set in eternal glory is a kingdom of righteousness and peace. That is the order of his kingdom. And he is, as uh, the scripture says here, of immense, infinite greatness. Just think how great he was, how great he is. His kingdom is great. His kingdom is a kingdom of righteousness and peace. And all this privilege belongs to each and every one of his subjects the weakest believer who hangs upon Christ, who trusts him, is a kingly priest. He has righteousness and peace. He has peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And he belongs to a kingdom and he is ruled by a king who rules and reigns in peace and righteousness. This is the privilege of belonging to Christ, of being a citizen of his kingdom. Oh, unbeliever, if there's any unbeliever listening to me, how can you, how can you stay outside this kingdom? What would you give? How must you long for a kingdom that is a righteous kingdom, a kingdom of peace where the Lord Jesus Christ is both king and priest over his people in an everlasting kingdom? Oh, come to Christ at once. And brother and sister, may we live in the conscious experience of rejoicing in the fact that our Savior is both, is king both, and priest both of righteousness and peace. And may we feed upon him and rest upon him and enjoy him as our kingly priest of righteousness and peace forever and ever.